Hello there, how you going? Hope you're having a fantastic day or if you're on the ball. Let's say welcome to my subscribers, not subscribers, trolls, bots and yeah, the lurkers alike. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I just want to know, have you ever heard of a turbine car? Well, I had not until the other day, so I'm going to share it. it. It wasn't really a big production thing. Okay, the Chrysler turbine car is an experimental two-door hard cop top coupe powered by a turbine engine manufactured by Chrysler from 1963 to 1964. The bodywork was constructed by Italian Design Studio and the Chrysler completed the final assembly in Detroit. A total of 55 cars were manufactured, five prototypes and a limited run of 50 cars for public use of program. The car was styled by Erwood Engel and the Chrysler Studios featured power brakes, power steering and a torque fight transmission. A root coloured paint called turbine bronze it featured for the paint. The Chrysler turbine engine program that produced the turbine car during the late 1930s and created multiple prototypes that successfully created numerous long distance trips in the 1950s and early 1960s. The A831 engines that powered the gear designed turbine car that would operate on many different fuels required less maintenance lasted longer than the conventional piston engine, although were much expensive, more expensive to produce. After testing, Chrysler conducted a user program from October 1963 to January 1966 that involved 203 individual drivers in 133 different cities across the United States com cumulatively, driving more than 1, 1 million miles or 1.6 million kilometres. The program helped the community determine a variety of problems with the cars, notably their compl complicated starting engine procedure, relatively unimpressed acceleration and subpar fuel economy and noise level. The experience also relieved key advantages of the turbine engine, including their remarkable durality, smooth operation and relatively modest maintenance requirements. After the user program ended in 1966, Chrysler reclaimed the cars and destroyed all but nine. Chrysler kept two, five are displayed in museums in the United States and two in private collections. The Chrysler turbine engine program ultimately ended in 1979, largely due to failure of the engines to meet government's emission regulations, relatively poor fuel economy, and prerequisite of receiving a government loan. 1979, they had to have the fuel element. Background Chrysler began researching turbine engines for aviation applications during the 1930s. In leading primary produce ex executive engineer by George Huber, after World War II, Huber was part of a group of engineers who began the idea of powering a car with a turbine. Other members of the Selective Chrysler research team worked on automated turbines, included fellow engineers Brad Bud Mann and Sam B. Williams. The concept intrigued them, largely because turbine engines have fewer moving parts than the piston-powered counterparts that can rely run on varied fuels. According to Charles, historian, uh, sorry, According to historian Charles K. Hyde, by the mid-1950s, Chrysler had led the way in turbine of gas turbine research, although General Motors and Rover also built operational turbine cars after World War II. After improving their turbine design, most notably by engineering a regenerator to resolve the issue with heat exchange, the Chrysler's team efforts reached maturity when they met made it a turbine to a otherwise stock 1954 Plymouth Belvedere. Heating and cooling emissions and exhaust were among the principal engineering challenges which faced the turbine engine. Chrysler tested the Belvedere, claiming that the turbine engine contained 20% fuel parts and weighed 200 pounds, 91 kilo less than comparable conventional piston engine. On the 16th of June 1954, the company publicly unveiled the turbine-powered Belvedere 
at its Chelsea gro Proving Grounds in Chelsea, Miss Michigan, in a front of 500 reporters. The next... Where were you, where were you? Chrysler unveiled its next turbine car in 1956 Plymouth on the 23rd of March in 1956. Huber drove it 3,200 miles or 4,860 4, kilometers on a four-day trip from New York to Los Angeles. Although the car was shadowed by a 14-person convoy of mechanics with fuel and spare parts, it only required two minor repairs on the trip neither of which were engine-related. The coast-to-coast -coast journey success of led Chrysler to double its size of turbine production and move from Highland Park, Michigan to a larger facility on Greenfield Road in Detroit. The program began generating several patent applications in 1957, due largely to the contributions of a metallistic Amy Boy and engineer Giovanni Savarini. The next iteration of the Chrysler turbine engine, the second generation engine, was placed into a 1959 Plymouth, which averaged 19.4 miles per US gallon, or 12 litres, 12.1 litres per 100 kilometres, which is what us Australians would use. use. On a trip to from Detroit to Woodridge Bridge, New Jersey, the mileage was substantially higher than 13 mpg or 18 litres per 100 kilometres uh, achieved with the first generation turbine on 1956 New York to Los Angeles journey. After Chrysler named former accountant Lynn Townsend to its new president in 1961, his company unveiled its next third generation turbine engine on February 28th. The CR2A was the first Chrysler turbine engine to be officially named. Unlike its more experimental predecessors, the CR2A was designed with an eye on cost and production methods. While the engine was under development in May 1960, Hubner said it would serve as its own torque converter generator, 140 horsepower or 100 kilowatt, have an acceleration lag of 1.5 seconds compared with 9 seconds for its predecessor, and weigh 150 or 400 pounds or 68 to 204 kilo, less than its comparably sized piston engine. Third generation turbines were mated to a variety of vehicles, including a 2.5 tonner or 1960 Dodge truck, the Chrysler Turbo Lift Freight concept car. Redefined CR2 turbines were installed into a 1962 Dodge Dart and a Plymouth Fury. The Dart was driven from New York City to LA in December 1961 and the Fury completed a journey from LA to San Francisco in January 62. After Hubner arrived in LA with the Dart, he spent two hours giving journalists rides in the turbine-powered car. Chrysler had brainstormed its fleet of turbine car dealers across North America, Europe and Mexico by February 1962 visiting 90 cities, giving rides to almost 14,000 people, and seen by millions more. The third-generation turbine program ended in, at the 1962 Chicago Auto Show that month. While the company displayed the turbine-powered fleet, shortly before the show, Chrysler announced the upcoming fourth-generation engine turbine engine. It planned to install a limited run of 50 to 75 cars, which would be loaned to the public at a no-cost rate in 1962. Three, sorry, 1963, a decision largely due to enthusiastic public response to the brainstorming tour. The engine. The Chrysler turbine car is powered by the A31, A31 Chrysler fourth generation turbine engine. The most notable difference from its predecessor, the CR2A, was its use of its twin regenerators, one mounted on either side of the gasifier instead of a single top covered mounted heat exchanger. The design helped the A831 trim 40 pounds or 18 kilos from the CR2A's weight, reducing it into relatively light 410 pounds or 186 kilo. Hubner described the turbine as a similar to a jet engine, noting that it only had one spark plug and about 80% fuel parts in a typical automotive piston engine. Due to their construction, the engines did not, uh, uh, 
require any threes, a cooling system, a radiator connecting rods or crankshafts. The A831 could operate on a diesel fuel, unleaded gasoline, kerosene and a PJ4 jet fuel, leaded gasoline, damaged it. According to Chrysler, it could burn a variety of unused fuels ranging from furnace oil to perfume, peanuts, soy oils. Mexican President Adolfo Lopez Matos ran one of the cars on tequila after Chrysler engineers confirmed that it would do so. The engine produced 130 BPH or 97 kilowatt hours at 36,000 RPM. 425 pound or 576 mm of torque and idle between 18,000 and 22,000 RPM. At idle, the exhaust did not exceed 180 Fahrenheit, 82 degrees Celsius. When driven at 120 mile or 193 kilometer hour, the turbine ran at its maximum of 60,000 RPM. The A831's compressor had a pressure ratio of 4 to 1, an efficiency ratio of 80%, a combustion rate of operated at about 95% efficiency. Compared to the conventional piston engines, twin engines are generally require less maintenance, last longer, and start more easily in cold conditions. The A831 started properly at temperatures as low as minus 20 Fahrenheit, minus 29 degrees Celsius. The car first to receive an A831 was a Plymouth Fury gear built turbine car. The engine had a 0 to 60 mile per hour or 97 kilometer time of about 12 seconds. Due to the exotic materials and strict tolerances needed to build the engines and invest casting method in which they were made. The A831s were very expensive to produce. Chrysler never disclosed the actual cost. Design The turbine car was styled in the Chrysler Studios under the direction of Earlwood Engel, who had worked at Ford Motor Company before moving to Chrysler. Due to its resemblance of the Eagle Engel design for Thunderbird, the car is occasionally called Engelbird. According to Humna, the design was intended to compete with the Chevrolet Corvette in addition to the Thunderbird. The car's bodies were handmade by Italian design studio gear, which had built several of the concept cars for Chrysler, including an Imperial limousine and the Nosery and the Norseman, sorry. Most the mostly completed turbine car bodies, which were assembled, painted, trimmed and upholstered by gear in Italy, were shipped to Chrysler's Greenfield Road Turbine Factory in Detroit for final assembly. This consisted of installing turbine engines, torque fit transmissions, electrical wiring, components such as radiators and heaters, radios and heaters. Building an individual car may have cost as much as fifty to fifty-five thousand, equivalent to four hundred seventy thousand in twenty twenty, to equivalent to four hundred fifty-nine thousand in twenty twenty. Vigil Exner Jr. estimates that the bodies in themselves cost about 20000 equivalent to 160000 in 2020, although Chrysler never revealed the cost of each turbine engine. The first five cars were completed in early 1962 as prototypes used for troubleshooting. Each were slightly different from the others, varying in exterior colour, interior and upholstery, roof material, Early problems discovered in prototypes included sluggish acceleration, attributed in part to the relatively heavy handed bodies and vibration, ultimately determined to be caused by the treads and the noticeable due to the usual smoothness of the turbine engine. The total of 50 identical turbine cars were built between 1963 and 1964. They were all two-door hardtop coupes, all or with air overpowered brakes and power steering. The cars had independent and front suspension with coil springs at the front wheel. Eight inch wing Horschweiser come trumpety standard and independent front longitude iron torsion bar, although the rear suspension utilized off the shelf leaf springs. All, field wheel, all four wheels were equipped with power assistive drum brakes. The car's body is finished in metallic root beer coloured paint known as turbine bronze. Its headlights deeply resemble taillights. Turn signals and pod shaped backup lights are mounted in chrome vestals. 
The turbine inspired style that carries through the center console design in the interior, which has a bronze colored leather upholstery, deep piled bronze carpet, and brushed aluminium accents. The cars have black vinyl hardtop covers on the roof, leather upholstered bucket seats, and white wall tires. The turbine's car's dashboard is dominated by three large group gauges, a speedometer, a tachometer, and a probometer. The later monitoring the temperature of the turbine's in inlet, like the engine's hottest component. Its appearance is mostly stock, although the tachometer and the primometer, primometer displays abnormally high readings compared to piston engine cars, 46,000 RPMs and 70,000 Fahrenheit, 930 degrees Celsius, respectively. All 55 car turbine cars had identical ignition keys. <laughs> And they all have the same key. Uh, user program. Two of the cars gave riders the rides to visit at the 1964 New York's World Fair. Another went on a worldwide tour. 50 were lent to the general public as part of user program. The cars were given to the drivers for a three month program at no charge aside for fuel costs. Participants also gave Chrysler in depth interviews within two weeks of returning the cars. During the user review, which ran from October 1963 to January 1966, the car's operational downtime was reduced from 4% early on to 1% by its conclusion. The user program helped identify a variety of, variety of problems within the cars, including a stellar malfunction at high altitudes. Difficulty in mastering the usual eight-step starting procedure for which some users resulted in engine damage and the car's relatively unimpressed acceleration. Nonetheless, the turbine engines were remarkably durable during comparison to contemporary piston engines. The most cited advantages of turbine engines, according to the participants' interviews, were its smooth and vibrational operation. Yeah, reduce maintenance requirements and ease of starting in different conditions. Most common complaints concern its slow acceleration, subpar fuel economy, relatively high noise level. Investigating the later complaint, clients have found that the distinctive sound of the car's turbine, the reminiscent of a jet engine, was positively reduced by 60% of those involved in the user program and disliked by 20% of their fellow users. The car had a conspicuous warning labels conditioning drivers to avoid using lead gasoline. Although the turbine engine could run on it, the lead additives left deliberating deposits in it. The only fuel which Chrysler recommended not to use was by far the easiest to obtain during the user program. Fuels commonly used by those participating in the user program include diesel, the home heating oil, more than 1 million miles or 1.6 million kilometers were accumulated in testing by the 50 cars given to the public, which were driven by 203 users before the program ended in 1966. The users lived 133 cities in 48 continuous states in Washington, D.C. 180 were male, 23 were female. Their ranges ranged from 21 to 70 and 60% were prize owners. Legacy April 1966, Chrysler produced product planning and development vice president Henry Cheeseberg noted that 50 test cars would be taken off the road regardless of whether Chrysler's turbine car went into production. Chrysler destroyed 46 of the cars after it finished the user program and other public displays. 45 of the cars were burned and crushed at the scrapyard south of Detroit and the others were destroyed at Chrysler Chelsea Proving Grounds. A widely circulated explanation was that the cars were destroyed to avoid substantial tariff on the imported gear bodies, although author Steve with Neho confirms that it has been largely discredited. The destruction of the cars was in line with the ultimate industry practice of not selling non-production or prototype cars to the public, according to Neho. The decision was influenced by Chrysler's public relations concerns. The potential difficulty of keeping the running cars running and the fears that owners would replace the turbine power parts with piston engines. 
guys that they acquired it was quite a lot. Our main objective is research and we don't want turbines turning up on used car lots. A similar practice was later used by General Motors with its EV1 when it terminated the program and destroyed most of the cars in 2003. Chrysler's development of turbine engines continued from the late 1960s to the 1970s, resulting in creation of 5th and 6th generation engines. The turbines ultimately failed to meet the government's emission regulations and had relative poor fuel economy. Despite promising early results and 6.4 million contract from the Environmental Protection Agency, according to what? Despite promising early results and 6.4 million contract from the Environmental Protection Agency, and in October 1967. Oh, sorry, according to Charles Hyde, the company's effort to enlarge and diversify its turbine program was unsuccessful and spread is already thin. Executive talent pool even thinner. In October 1967, the Department of Commerce report concluded that the turbine engine was unsuited to automobiles. Development continued on onboard turbines in part because turbine exhaust contains fewer unburned hydrocarbons and lower concentrations of other pollutants. March 1971, the Williams Research Corporation continued developing a turbine engine with funding from the National Air Pollution Control Administration. Chrysler's turbine engine development continued through the mid-1970s with later concept versions of engines being installed in the Dodge Aspen. However, the program and the seventh generation engine were discontinued in 1979 as a requirement of the Chrysler Corporation Loan Guarantee Act of 1979, as well as due to its inability to attain enough fuel economy. One Chrysler turbine car appeared in 1964 film, The Lively Set, painted with blue racy stripes. It was the only turbine car not painted bronze. Only nine t Chrysler turbine cars have survived. Two are kept by Chrysler, and three were initially retained by the company. Five are on display at museums around the United States. Two were acquired at private collections. Chrysler has displayed one of its cars at the Walter P. Chrysler Museum in Elburn Hills, Michigan. The five cars on museum display were donated by Detroit Historical Museum and Henry Ford Museum in Dearborn, Michigan. The Michigan Transportation in Kirkwood, Missouri, in Patterson Automotive Museum in LA, and Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C. In 2005, the Detroit Historic Museum lent its car, which had been in warehouse storage, to Gilmore Car Museum, Corns, Hickory Corns, Michigan. All cars donated to museums had their fan assemblies removed to render their engine, engines inoperated and operable. Although the car owner, although the car owned by the Museum of Transportation was restored and returned, but to operating condition in 1980, allowing it to appear at car shows. Two Chrysler turbine engines have been acquired by private collectors. One is owned by an unknown person since it being sold in March 2021. The car was originally donated to the former Hanna Collection in Rio, Nevada, purchased by Domino's founder Tom Morgan then sold to Frank Kleps of Fort Wayne, Indiana. The second is owned by a comedian and television host, Jay Leno, who purchased one of the three turbine cars originally retained by Chrysler in 2009. Leno's car was featured in BBC television show James May's Cars and the People. Both privately owned Chrysler turbine cars are all operational. So there's its location.
Switch engineers like the exhaust. Looks slick, doesn't it? <laughs> Break it down. Heat not overheat. Look up here. Beautiful. Oh, the gauges and switches. Well, there you go. Thanks for watching. You have a fantastic day wherever you are in the world. Raise your vibrations. Much love. Bye now.